This is the Paranagua Container Terminal, the largest container terminal in South America. Currently, it is the biggest investment in the port sector in Brazil, according to the official website. Its infrastructure is prepared to meet the Brazilian demand for the next 30 years, with a capacity to handle 2.5 million containers per year. However, there is an important detail. The port belongs to CM Port, a major Chinese conglomerate that acquired 90% of its stake. While this may suggest that China is buying Brazil, the truth is that they are acquiring strategic points worldwide. CM Port has over 50 ports in 16 continents and 26 countries in its portfolio. In 2019 alone, they handled more than 110 million TEUs, 20-foot equivalent units. However, it is important to note that there are other Chinese and Indian conglomerates also making acquisitions around the world. Hello! Welcome to the Infinite Insights channel. If you're new here, we talk about business, entrepreneurship, and geopolitics. If you already follow the channel, be sure to enable notifications so you don't miss any videos. Now, let's talk about another example of a port, the Port of Long Beach in California. It is the second largest port in North America, second only to the Port of Los Angeles and ahead of the Port of New York. Annually, it handles around 16 million tons of cargo, which are shipped to warehouses, factories, and homes across the United States. This port, with an area of just 13 square kilometers, is responsible for over $100 billion in trade and employs over 340,000 people in Southern California. Similar to the Paranagua Container Terminal, the Port of Long Beach doesn't belong to the city of Long Beach, the state of California, or even the United States. In the late 1980s, the port was sold to a company called Orion Oversize International Limited, based in Hong Kong at the time when Hong Kong was a British colony and a close economic partner of the United States. The sale was seen as a win-win as the Hong Kong-based company planned to invest billions of dollars to expand the port on its own, creating hundreds of thousands of jobs in Southern California. For about three decades, the relationship between Long Beach, California, and the Ron Con Company was very positive. However, in July 2017, the Chinese state-owned company called Costco acquired 75% of Orion Oversize International Limited, thus becoming the new owner of the Hong Kong-based company. Therefore, technically, the company that owns the port of Long Beach in California is now the Chinese government. This change was not well received, especially by the United States government, which considered it unacceptable for a Chinese state-owned company to control one of the country's major commercial and economic hubs due to national security risks. As a result, the U.S. federal government forced Costco to immediately sell the port to a non-Chinese company. In 2019, the Australian group Macquarie acquired the port for $1.8 billion. Now, the port of Long Beach is owned by an Australian private company which is considered safer in the eyes of the United States government. However, it is important to note that the acquisition of ports is not only happening in Brazil and the United States. This movement is taking place worldwide. For example, in Hambantota, Sri Lanka, China acquired control of a strategically located port below one of its rivals, India, in 2017. This acquisition took place because the Sri Lankan government was heavily indebted and needed foreign investments to save its economy. In Australia, Chinese investors purchased equity stakes in the port of Darwin and a significant portion of the port of Melbourne in 2015 and 2016. China also controls the Freeport port in the Bahamas, located near the coast of the United States. In fact, China and Chinese companies controlled ports in virtually all major countries around the world. Even in countries where they don't have full control, they often have at least a 49% stake in some ports. This trend of port acquisitions by China has gained momentum in the past 10 years, making China the largest owner of ports in the world today. This raises the question of the reasons behind this movement and what the real intentions of the Chinese plan are. This strategy aligns with the Belt and Road Initiative, China's foreign and economic strategic policy aimed at increasing regional connectivity and promoting a more prosperous future for China.
But in reality, this initiative, known as the Belt and Road Initiative, is a comprehensive approach to China's foreign policy that aims to strengthen trade, economic, and infrastructure connections with countries around the world. Through this initiative, China seeks to expand its global influence, boost its international trade, and promote its economic development. The acquisition of ports is an integral part of this strategy. By controlling ports in different regions, China can establish more efficient trade routes and ensure a steady flow of goods to its industries and consumers. Additionally, presence in strategic ports allows China to exert political and economic influence over the countries in question. There are several motivations behind China's plan to acquire ports worldwide. First, China seeks to secure access to essential natural resources for its rapidly growing economy. By controlling ports in resource-rich regions such as oil, minerals, and food, China can facilitate the transportation of these resources to its industries and citizens. In addition, the acquisition of strategic ports aligns with China's efforts to strengthen its geopolitical presence. Having control or strong influence over ports around the world allows China to exert power and influence in different regions, expanding its global reach and challenging the traditionally U.S.-led hegemony. China is also seeking to diversify its trade routes and reduce its dependence on traditional maritime routes, such as the Strait of Malacca. By acquiring ports in different parts of the world, China can establish alternative routes and ensure the security of its imports and exports, mitigating potential disruptions in existing routes. However, this Chinese expansion raises concerns in some countries. There are fears that the growing Chinese presence in strategic ports may compromise national sovereignty, enable espionage or economic manipulation by China, or increase economic dependency on the Asian giant. In response to these concerns, some countries have taken measures to control or restrict the acquisition of strategic infrastructure by Chinese companies. These restrictions aim to protect national interests and safeguard security and economic autonomy. Thank you for watching so far. Don't forget to leave a comment sharing your thoughts on this. Let's enrich this discussion, as your opinion is not only welcome but also very important. Take care and see you in the next video.